Good day and welcome to this first of a series of Lenten devotions that we're going to bring you uh, here through McCarter Presbyterian Church in Greenville, South Carolina. We're using a Lenten devotion put together on the writings of Henri Nguyen, who was a Catholic priest who came to this as a second career after being an academic um, teaching in universities. The phrase and the title, Show Me Your Way, O Lord, expresses much of his sentiment in his faith journey, and you will likely find yourself identifying with many of his situations that he identifies as well. Conversion, renewal, silence, prayer, faith, living the Christian life. These are all topics that he touches on. But he also emphasizes that the way through Lent is putting aside the works of darkness and putting on the works of light. And this is done through a daily exercise of prayer. Praying means above all listening to the voice of Jesus who dwells in the depths of the heart. Jesus does not force himself on us. His voice is reserved. Whatever we may do in our lives, let us never fail to listen to the voice of the Lord in our hearts. Because in our restless, noisy world, the loving voice of God is easily drowned out. Each day, keep a certain period of time free for this act of listening to God, even if it's only a few minutes. A few minutes every day exclusively on Jesus and God's work will change our lives from the ground up. We'll begin with this devotion for Friday, the fourth week in Lent. This reading is from the New Jerusalem Bible, which was the preference of uh, the editor. You know me, and you know where I came from. Yet I have not come of my own accord, but he who sent me is true. You do not know him, but I know him, because I have my being from him, and it was he who sent me. From the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verses 28 and 29. Henri Nguyen writes, Fellowship with Jesus Christ is not a commitment to suffer as much as possible, but a commitment to listen with him to God's love without fear. We're often tempted to explain suffering in terms of the will of God. Not only can this evoke anger and frustration, but also it is false. God's will is not a label that can be put on unhappy situations. God wants to bring joy, not pain, peace, not war, healing, not suffering. Therefore, instead of declaring anything and everything to be the will of God, we must be willing to ask ourselves where in the midst of our pains and sufferings we can discern the loving presence of God. When, however, we discover that our obedient listening leads us to our suffering neighbors, we can go to them in the joyful knowledge that love brings us there. We are poor listeners because we are afraid that there is something other than love in God. This is not so strange since we seldom, if ever, experience love without a taint of jealousy, resentment, revenge, even hatred. Often we see love surrounded by limitations and conditions. We tend to doubt what presents itself to us as love and are always on guard, prepared for disappointments. For this reason, we find it hard simply to listen or to obey. But Jesus truly listened and obeyed because only he knew the love of his Father, the Creator. Not that anybody has seen the Father except the one who comes from God. He has seen the Father, Jesus said in John 6. 
and also in John 7. You do not know him, but I know him because I have come from him. Jesus came to include us in his divine obedience. He wanted to lead us to the Father, the Creator, so that we could enjoy the same intimacy that he did. When we come to recognize that in and through Jesus we are called to be daughters and sons of God and to listen to him, our loving Father, Creator, and listen with total trust and surrender, then we will also see that we are invited to be no less compassionate than Jesus himself. When obedience becomes our first and only concern, then we too can move into the world with compassion and feel the suffering of the world so deeply that through our compassion, we can give new life to others. The world in which we live today and, uh, and that is about us has suffering and we know so much seems more than ever a world from which Christ has withdrawn himself. How can I believe that in this world we're constantly being prepared to receive the Spirit? Still, I think that this is exactly the message of hope. God has not withdrawn. He, sent his, he God, sent His Son to share our human condition. Edit. The world in which we live today seems more than ever a world that is absent of Christ and God. How can we believe that in this world we're constantly being prepared to receive the Spirit or that the Spirit surrounds us? Still, this is exactly the message of hope. God has not withdrawn from the world. God sent the, Jesus his only Son, to share our human condition. And the Son, Jesus Christ, sent us God's Spirit to lead us into the intimacy of a divine life. It's in the midst of this chaotic suffering of humanity that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of love, becomes visible. Are we able to recognize God's presence? Let us pray. Merciful God, you know our weakness and distress, yet the weaker we are, the stronger is your help. Grant that we may accept with joy and gratitude the gift of this time of grace and bear witness to your work in our lives. Amen. May God's blessing continue with you.